both what you, Shannon, and Skip think about this. Shannon, is this a legitimate excuse to skip out on talking to the media? Absolutely not. Skip, you know I'm very clear when it comes to this. Win, lose, or draw, you speak. You score 40, triple, double, you're going to speak. You get beat by 37, you speak. Because I believe the thing that makes the greats great is that they don't deviate. Skip, I don't believe LeBron James trained any harder in the offseason after he lost the 2011 finals than he did when he won the 2012 finals. That's what makes him great. That's what makes the great great is that they're able to stay here, win, lose, or draw. And I get the level of frustration because the season is not going, although you're playing better than what everybody, with the exception of maybe you. And I don't know deep down if you thought you'd be averaging 28 points a game, 7-6 and six at this point during the season. But the season is going great for you, but it's not going great for the team. And I know you're the ultimate team guy because you're willing to forego your shot to make sure everybody else gets a shot. So I, I know that about LeBron James. But Skip, by saying that, you know, I might have said something that I would have regretted, which means you might have point, you were maybe going to point the finger at some teammates. I believe LeBron James could have came to that podium and said, you know what, guys, that what we did tonight was not good enough. And it starts with me, me as the leader of this team. I've got to give better effort. I've got to shoot the ball better. I've got to defend better. We have to do that collectively. We got our play. We got our hustle. We got our shot. The performance that we gave tonight, Laker Nation, I apologize. That's not good enough. To the front office, Jeannie Buss, I apologize. Your dad, you, and everybody that's in this organization and everybody that supports the Los Angeles Lakers deserve better than what we gave and what we showed tonight. And I can promise you moving forward, I'm not going to say we're going to win all of our games, but I can promise you this, you will never see that effort again. Not with LeBron James on the team. I promise you that. That's all I want to say about that situation. I got nothing else to say. I'm done. That's how he could have handled it. I got no problem with that. Yeah, it would have been short. But I was disappointed that LeBron didn't speak after that game. I'm very disappointed because I believe LeBron knows how he could have handled it and what he could have said and made everything okay. It's not going to erase the 37-point loss, but LeBron James, LeBron is too good at this. LeBron is a professional when it comes to dealing with wins and losses and handling the media in such a way, you know deep down inside he wants to go to a different place, but he understands that his words carry brick weight, not just paper weight, yep. brick weight. No. And everybody hangs on what he says. And when he says something, it stays elevated for an extremely long period of time. But I disagree with this. I can't get down with this one. Mm. LeBron James should have spoke after that terrible, after that debacle on Saturday night. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a first here on Undisputed. Les Shannon Sharp <laughs> just criticized <laughs> LeBron James for his behavior. For his behavior. I congratulate <laughs> you <go. laughs> my friend and partner, Shannon Sharp, for doing what he just did. Way to go. LeBron deserved the shot that you just took. I'm not sure Rich Paul's going to like it. I'm not sure Maverick's going to like it. I'm not sure you're going to be the fifth horseman after today, but so be it. You did your job. You spoke your piece, that's what friends your heart, do. your soul. Skip, rem- Skip, yes, Skip remember I told do. you, what yeah. do true friends do? They tell you what you yeah. need to know, not what you want to hear. Now, maybe one of those guys said, yeah, bro, you was right. Nah, bro, I don't get down like that. I hold everybody accountable, be it Tom Brady, be it LeBron, be it Dak, be it KD. It does not matter. I just say, hey, this is what I think it should have happened. Hey, and I roll with it. <clears throat> and because you continue to say LeBron James is having the greatest 19th season anybody's ever had, and I co-sign, that reminds everybody he's in his 19th year dominating this league. He is the king. He is not only the face of the franchise, he's the face of the league. And obviously, because of that, you cannot duck after losing by 37 at Denver on a Saturday night. You just can't. You you, you are the leader of the team in basketball, the Los Angeles Lakers, 
who were the consensus favorite to win it all before the season started. So when that happens, you have to speak in part to to protect your teammates because if you leave them holding yes. the bags, they all have to go up there and sit on the podium, starting with Russell Westbrook, who did, to his credit, go address the media after the game. They all have to take the shots that, that you should have taken first. Vogel has to take them. You have to take them, too. So I, I appreciate the fact that you said that. And by the way, now I've got to take it back to Tom Brady. You were very hard on Brady the other day when we talked about his behavior, obviously his pouty, childish behavior, his poor sport, the poor loser behavior losses. at New Orleans. Uh, you know, we talk about no handshakes after losses. We talk about running over to Dennis Allen, the D coordinator of the Saints. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. F yourself, running back to the bench and taking the tablet and firing it and breaking it. Childish, mm -hmm. pouty behavior, tantrum behavior. Okay. And I said, well, that's just who he is. And you said, well, there are quarterbacks in the league who don't look like Tom Brady who would not be given that kind of pass. That's competitive fire yeah. in Tom Brady. And, and I give you that. I get you. You are correct about that. But let's not let LeBron off the same hook because he's all the, you know, obviously mm -hmm. often trying to compare himself to Brady, put himself in the same conversation with Brady. Well, LeBron right. can be pouty and childish after losses, too. And I remind mm -hmm. you, if we could hark back to that 2018 finals game one at Oracle, if you remember this, in the game, it was a disaster of a debacle. I think we're seeing him walk out here. I, I think we're going to show it here in a second. He, he, yeah, here we go. He, you know, after the J.R. Smith blunder, LeBron just couldn't take it. And, you know, again, I thought LeBron should have taken the last shot. He passes up to George Hill. We've been through that a million times. But there's LeBron. He just goes and sits down the bench from his team and pouts. It's like, I don't want to associate with you guys. And I thought it skip, was just skip, poor stop, body stop language you by thought he LeBron. Said that, no, no, I'm not going to let you do that. You said he's sitting at the end of the bench. There's only an empty chair between JR. The the there's also no. an empty chair between JR and, and George away. Hill. He sat right away. There. He sat away from his team. Skip. Okay. There's the Jeff Green team. standing right next to him. Okay. For for the first two minutes and thirty seconds of overtime, he did not take a shot. They had a shot. There was they a were, shot presented. Again, they were down only one at the end of regulation. He could have pulled up on Steph Curry, who who got switched on to him. He could have taken a fifteen foot jump shot to win the game. He passed the ball. Okay. Skip. So my point is. You 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 got to take back over. You got to be the leader. You should have been leading that sideline huddle, saying, "Hey, if if we come into tonight thinking we could get to overtime of Game One against that Dynamo team, that dynasty, we we would have taken it." So you got to rally your troops. And he puts his head down and pouts. Okay, it's it's just who he's been. And then remember what happened last year, Game Five at Phoenix. It's five what five. 45 left in the game. What were they down? 105 yeah. to 73. Here we go. They were down 32. And he just checks out. He just checks out. He just says, I'm out. I can't take it anymore. Yeah. He leaves the bench and walks up the tunnel. Mm -hmm. You can argue he needed to go get treatment. You, you got to you just got to no. live with your team, and you got to no. take the beating the rest of the game. You yeah. can't disassociate from the team. I'm sorry. You can't. Right. I don't know why I would skip. I, and okay. I said that. I said he needed to see the, the last five minutes. Skip, you remember when Russell Westbrook played that horrible game and he blew off the media? I said, no, you can't do that. Because when you scored, when you had on the. How many times did Russell Westbrook blow out the, blow off the media when he had a triple double? Not once. I, I'm a firm believer, Skip, is that no matter what the circumstances are, win, lose, or draw, your behavior and how you handle things should not change. Yes, I know. I, yep. I get to speak from personal experience. And I'm not saying I'm LeBron James. I've never been, and I never say that, but I'm saying you have to speak. You have to carry about, go about your business as if everything is usual because your team, they're watching you. They take their cues from you. So if you go out there and say, you know what, guys? Tonight, we didn't have it tonight. And the reason why we didn't have it defensively we were not engaged. We gave, we didn't give a little effort. We gave no effort. We didn't make shots. And in the process of us not making shots, it affected us on the defensive end. So now all of a sudden we're not getting back. We're not switching. We're not communicating. 
We're not doing the things that could have prevented us, maybe not from losing this game, but losing it in the fashion in which we lost it. And it looks like we're not caring. That's why Magic Johnson tweeted what he tweeted. I even tweeted. Why did? They're just going through the motion. They don't care. That's how LeBron could have handled that situation. And I believe, you know, they, they probably had a conversation in the locker room about the behavior and skill. That's why Frank B, Frankie B was on the hot seat after that game. Because yeah. the higher-ups in that organization, starting with Miss Jeannie Buzz, like, what the hell, y'all? What is that? Man, I'm not paying no $45 million. I'm not paying no $42 million for that. No, 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 hell no. I need to see more effort than that. I'm not saying we need to win every game, but I don't ever want to see that effort again in any game. And so that's, okay. that's so all Shannon I'm saying. Shannon Sharp. All right. You were yes. the team leader and spokesman for a couple of Super Bowl teams, victors in yeah. Denver. And yet the yeah. loss that haunts you and still sticks in your craw, if not psyche, is that game you lost to Mark Brunel and the Jacksonville, Jacksonville. Jaguars. 